Hey guys, it's Coded Steel, and welcome to my series on processing programming. So, guys, you might be asking, what is processing? Processing is probably one of the newer, probably one of the newest languages that's out there. It was in, uh, created back in the 90s. It's basically a low-level form of Java. It takes Java and makes it much, much easier for somebody to be able to use. So you guys might be wondering, where do I get this processing stuff? What is processing? Where is it at? How do I download the stuff that will allow me to write it? Whatever else. Well, uh, you're in luck because my channel page, if you go under my About tab, it has this section here called Processing. If I click on Processing, it takes me directly to the area where I would download the processing compiler. And as you guys can see, there's a multitude of different selections here. I can't help you with this because it depends on the type of Windows you're running. Windows 64-bit, Windows 32-bit, Linux, blah, blah, blah. So whatever type of computer you have, and whether you have Windows 32 or 64 or whatever else, you need to select the one that's appropriate for your operating system. And then you'll download it. Yeah, I think, I can't remember if it comes as a RAR file or not. If it does, then you'll have to extract it to a location or whatever else. But once it's all installed, then you're pretty much ready to processing program at that point. So once you have the compiler installed, then you get an icon. I don't remember if this icon appears on your desktop by default. You might have an option that allows you to choose for it to. But if you don't, um, in your directory for processing, let's see, nope, wrong spot. My docs, my documents. I have processing right here inside of this thing. This is where all my projects are going to get saved. I think I have it actually under downloads. Processing 2.1. There we go. And right here is where you can open it from inside of this folder as well. So if you don't have it appear on your desktop, you guys can copy. You could right click on it and say create a shortcut. You could take the shortcut, put it on your desktop, and rename it as processing like I did over here. So if it doesn't appear by default, that's the other option you guys can do. So, But once you guys have it installed, you can click on it and you saw it pop up and run and whatever else. And you get a window that looks like this. Um, this is the processing environment. This is the compiler environment that you guys will be writing in. So it's unlike, really serious, it's unlike a lot of languages. It kind of has, it has its own language style. So you guys, if any of you have done like C programming or C++ programming or maybe even Java programming, you know that there's something called a main. Well, inside of what's called a sketch, these are called sketch files, uh, there is no such, the main is run in the background. So you guys don't really have a main. What we have is we have these two primary functions that we have. It's one's called setup and that looks like this. And then the other one is called void loop. So as you guys might guess, setup might be where I declare my initial stuff. Like I can set the window size, how big I want the window to appear to be or whatever else. And, you know, in my loop, it's going to loop through and run continuously. So you guys might wonder what makes processing such a special language that I would make a, a series on it. Guys, you can do a lot with processing. It's actually an amazing programming language. You guys could build games, much more advanced games than you could build in low-level languages like C. C, you guys, you guys can build, ga uh, build games in the C programming language, but it's very low level. This has much, much more capabilities than the C programming language does when it comes to building game environments or even building, like, you could build graphs and all this other crazy stuff in here much more simply than you can do it in C. So my goal of this video is to just kind of introduce you guys to the processing environment and some easy, easy, easy commands. So what we're gonna do is our first command is inside of the setup. Remember, this is something you guys need to know. Setup calls is called one time. The setup function is called one time. That's where all of the setup stuff is done. Like, you know, setting the size, setting the window size, which is done by the size command. So you guys might be wondering, what is size? How does this, what does this all mean? How does this all work? Okay, let me show you. Um, size function sets the size of the window. 
So I set it to 200 pixels by 200 pixels. This is the pixel, I believe this is the pixel width, this is the height width, width of the window, and this is the height of the window, I believe. So if I run this code here, I get a window that's 200 by 200 pixels. Okay, so that means there's 200 by 200 locations here. So that means there's actually, that comes out to about 40,000 pixels, is that? I think that's right, yes, 40,000 pixels in this grid. So there's 40,000 locations that I can write a pixel value to inside of this window. Now I can change this size and I can make it bigger, 200 by 300. As you guys can see, this controlled the height of the window. Now it's much, much taller. And I can do the same, in the same respect, I can do, you know, maybe a thousand, or not 10,000, a thousand, that'd be really big. So as you guys can see, now it's very wide. So this controls your width, this controls your height, and it can control the size of the window. So you guys might be wondering what happens if I don't specify a size? What, what happens then? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to get the default size, which I believe is 100 by 100. Don't quote me on that. Let me actually check that because we can check that easily just by saying 100 by 100 and see if that comes out to about the same size. And it does. So, yes, guys, by default, it's 100 by 100 if you don't specify a window size. So that's the size function, in essence, of what you can do with it. So... I'm going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to just leave setup alone. And I want to show you guys well, actually we're going to do something else and we're inside of this. We're going to get rid of the loop function. There's no use for that in this to this first video. But we have the point function here. Point is the most basic function in setup or in in processing probably. This is the low, most low level type function that you guys are going to use. So what we can do inside of point is we can do something called, you know, specify where a pixel location is going to be. So I'm going to put a pixel at 1212. This may be very hard to see, guys, because a pixel is the smallest unit that you can write a value to in a, on a computer. It's extreme, going to be probably extremely hard to see. But if you guys look very closely, the pixel is right there. It's a small black pixel. So I can text, I could write, you know, pixel values to a location like this, and I can get very, very small, you know, dots in the screen. This, as you can see, guys, is, is absolutely, like, amazing. It's crazy how you can write to such a small location. The possibilities are endless. You could create a whole picture just by writing a bunch of points and streaming it all the way across the screen using you know different types of loops and whatever else and you can create an image so as you guys can see just by looking with this function and this function alone you guys can do some amazing things by looping through and printing multiple points on a screen you can create an image and you can create different you know yeah uh, interactions with it as far as keys on the keyboard mouse presses all of those functions or can work together and you can create a game or basically anything with this type of language. So this series is going to go through and it's going to show you guys how to use the multiple different loops and capabilities that, you know, this uh, stuff can do, this processing language can do. And it's much, much simpler, much easier to understand than, say, C or C++ or Java. So this is actually a good first language for some people to learn. So... Anyways, that's all I have for you guys for this tutorial. This is a quick crash course on processing. Next time, we're going to move into some of the more function, some of the functions that are available to you in processing. So please subscribe to my channel, guys, and I can't wait to put up the next video.